was just a dream. <laughs> hey everybody, Drillin' in the name of here, and today we are finally gonna talk about the Colette Wave Cooker. Quick side note, I have a really exciting announcement at the end of this video, so please stick around. Now this is obviously long overdue, but I'm still getting requests for a wave cooker video, and I of course have a long history of giving the people what they want. But I've really procrastinated on this one because the wave cooker is just weird. Unlike the sludge pump which initially looked underwhelming but ended up being one of my favorite deep rock weapons, the wave cooker initially looked really cool and ended up feeling underwhelming. And to be honest, it's also pretty confusing. So what is the Colette wave- hang on. So what is the Colette Wave Cooker? The Wave Cooker is a driller secondary weapon that does its damage by emitting microwaves. Let's take a look at it in action. <laughs> Brutal. This is a hit scan weapon, which means it does its damage within a cylindrical beam that's projected from its lens. This beam is 1.2 meters wide by default, which can be increased with mods, but I'll get into that later. The beam is essentially infinite and obviously extremely accurate, which makes the wave cooker arguably the driller's best long range option. Another plus of the wave cooker is that it deletes exploders and negates their death explosion, which is especially nice since the sludge pump no longer does that. And lastly, the cooker is great at wiping out hordes of swarmers and jellies. So what's the issue? Well, for one thing, all of driller's primaries are already great at dealing with pest enemies. But more importantly, the base weapon is just kind of weak. For that reason, as well as the fact that there are already several great wave cooker guides out there, I'm gonna skip the basics and get straight to the good stuff. Where the wave cooker really shines is when it's used in conjunction with your primary weapon. After forcing myself to give it another chance, I've come up with two builds that have honestly made the wave cooker my primary secondary when playing Driller. Let's start with the contamination build, which of course pairs with our sludge pump. This is a set it and forget it build. Set it and forget it. You got it, guys. Uh, cook it and book it, if you will. The main focus of this build is to use slows and DOTs to melt our enemies before our very eyes. Now I still load out my sludge pump for those two things, so I'll be using a 3-1-2-1-1 build with disperser compound. As for the wave cooker, let's start with the overclock and work our way backwards. Gamma contamination gives the wave cooker a 25% chance to radiate an enemy. This radiation is divided into two effects, a DOT that damages the affected enemy directly, and a radioactive field that damages other enemies within 2 meters of the affected enemy. And while the field doesn't damage the affected enemy itself, two affected enemies can apply the field to each other if they're close enough. This effect lasts 7 seconds and is pretty easy to proc in a crowd, so this is a really nice DOT at the cost of a small ding to damage, mag size, and shot width. Up here in tier 5 we have Boiler Ray in the B slot, which is a really nice all-purpose mod. But in the A and C slots we have two mods that are tailor-made to work with our primaries. For this build, we're going to take Contagion Transmitter. This gives the Wave Cooker a 30% damage bonus to enemies afflicted with corrosion or neurotoxin. We're obviously going to be corroding enemies with our sludge pump, but this also pairs nicely with neurotoxin grenades, or if a gunner on your team is running a neurotoxin build. In addition to the damage bonus, there's also a 10% chance it triggers its own neurotoxin anytime the cooker damages a corroded or neurotoxined enemy. Now tier 4 is a bit of a weird one. The equipment terminal doesn't list specific values, but the DRG wiki shows power supply overdrive gives about a 30 35% increase to the base rate of fire in exchange for a 90% lens width decrease and a moderate heat per second penalty, while the wide lens add-on gives a fairly small width increase in exchange for a pretty heavy heat per second penalty. Now the 25% increase on the wide lens add-on may not seem like much, but when you look at the difference in your reticle in-game, it may seem like it's worth the trade-off. Unfortunately, this is a bit of a misleading visual. Wide lens add-on only increases shot width by 25%, but if you measure the area of the reticles, it seems to depict more like a 125% increase. A 25% increase of the reticle size should look more like this. And as you can see in this clip, it doesn't really catch much more than the base width. This seems especially weird when compared to the concave lens mod in tier 1, which gives a 300% width increase with no heat penalty. And that difference in-game is pretty massive, so if you really want a much wider lens, I'd take it in tier 1. To be honest, as much as I like this new toggle mechanic, I don't really find myself using either of these mods, so I encourage you to try them for yourself and see which, if either, you prefer. One thing we for sure do want is to slow enemies down, so we'll take Densification Ray in tier 3, which slows enemies by 50% for one second. In tier 2, we have a Rate of Fire boost and a couple heating and cooling mods. Now I've had more than a couple people ask what the hell I'm doing, but I pretty much only tap fire or shoot very short bursts with this weapon. I do this mostly because the cooker overheats pretty easily and I don't feel like watching the heat meter, but also because I'm mainly using it to trigger all those status effects. This is what makes it the set it and forget it build. The goal here is to corrode a single target or group of enemies with the sludge pump, and then swap to the wave cooker to combo that corrosion with slows and neurotoxin. And once you've stacked all these effects up, just leave your enemies to melt. 
You can achieve the max slow with this combo by using the wave cooker on a corroded enemy standing in a goo puddle, which brings them down to a measly 6.7% of their movement speed. And even though the slow from the wave cooker only lasts one second, it can be reapplied with each hit. And while they're stuck like idiots in your puddles, all those DOTs are wearing down tanky enemies and completely eviscerating groups of weaker enemies. As for the final tier, I personally like a little extra ammo with this build, but if you find yourself not going through as much as I do, the concave lens mod is worth a look. All in all, this is a really fun and effective build. Comboing the status effects is truly satisfying, especially if you have teammates that can pile on some of their own. On to our second build. This one is for all you cryo drillers out there. And crisper drillers, I guess. This of course is a temp shock build, and it's become one of my favorite builds in all of DRG. For this one, we'll start with tier 5, work our way back, and then talk about the overclock. In tier 5, we'll take that C slot I mentioned earlier, which is called Exothermic Reactor. This gives the wave cooker a 25% chance to temp shock a frozen or ignited enemy. Temp shock is great because it instantly does 200 damage when triggered, but the added benefit of this mod is it spreads a mist that heats or cools the enemies around it. This can cause some crazy chain reactions that we'll talk about a bit later. In tier 4, once again, just choose whatever feels best for you. Tier 3 is where it got a bit confusing. Temperature amplifier sounds like it may go well with a temp shock build, but the description's a little vague and kind of makes it sound like it does the same thing as exothermic reactor. The wiki describes it as adding heat or cold AoE when striking an ignited or frozen enemy. But if temperature amplifier keeps enemies hot or cold, and the goal of exothermic reactor is to reset temperature, it seems like they might be at odds with each other. But I realized as a cryo driller, I don't really need the slow in tier 3 because you can't get slower than frozen, and when I switched over, those chain reactions I mentioned seemed even more powerful. I chatted with Meat Shield about this, and after referencing some testing done by Evan, the consensus seems to be that temperature amplifier actively heats or cools the enemies around the ignited or frozen enemy you're attacking, which makes the mist spread by the temp shock more likely to ignite or freeze them as well. <sighs> It's worth noting that the temperature amplifier AoE is centered on where you're striking that frozen or ignited enemy and not that enemy's center of mass, so be mindful of where you're aiming to maximize that AoE. And as you can see, the chain reactions are pretty insane. This completely wipes out large groups of enemies with ease. It's also really nice against hordes of rockpox enemies, which have become especially pesky in Season 4. And the nice thing about these chain reactions is that unlike the set it and forget it build, you aren't switching between your primary and secondary weapon nearly as often because the requisite status effect is being passed along by the secondary. This also means you won't spend nearly as much primary ammo freezing or igniting large groups of enemies. I'm sure these clips speak for themselves to a degree, but you really have to try this for yourself to feel how incredibly satisfying it is. I'm going to take the rate of fire boost in tier 2 again, and lastly, convex lens for plus 2 damage in tier 1. With the previous build, it was super easy to take out things like web and acid spitters from long range, but without that added radiation, the extra damage from convex lens compensates for that loss of DOT. As for the overclock, mega power supply is a good all around option since we're losing that added ammo in tier 1. Plus if you're mostly tap firing like I do, you don't have to worry about the cooling rate and overheat duration. However, as someone who is primarily using this with the cryo cannon, I like Diffusion Ray. To bring it all together, let me show how I approach a group of enemies. Because of the stacked temp spread, you really only need to freeze or ignite one or two enemies. Once I've done that, I circle around the group with the wave cooker to trigger those chain reactions. Ideally, you can trap a bigger enemy in the middle of the group because it will continue to get caught in the chain for multiple temp shocks and huge damage. The only issue with frozen targets is they don't move, so if you're dealing with a crowd, the enemy you're trying to target may be getting blocked by other enemies. However, with Diffusion Ray, your cooker can penetrate up to three enemies, so you shouldn't have any issue hitting your target. Diffusion Ray also slows enemies by 20%, which helps you keep some distance, with the only downside being a minus one to damage. Now, if you're a CRISPR driller, first of all, I'm sorry to hear that. But more importantly, you may decide to go a slightly different route with this build. For one thing, enemies on fire can still move, so you don't have to worry quite as much about getting blocked. There's also generally a lower threshold to light an enemy on fire than to freeze an enemy, so you may not need that added temperature AoE. Long story short, if you're pairing the wave cooker with the crisper, you may want to consider densification rate in tier 3 and the more general purpose mega power supply overclock. One last tip, if you're lucky enough to get jetty boots, it's super fun to combo hot and cold temp shocks by alternating between your cryo cannon and your boots. All in all, I'm so glad enough of you wanted to see a wave cooker video because I'm not sure I otherwise would have been pried away from the EPC. But this temp shock build is so satisfying that the cryo cooker combo has honestly become the main thing I run now. So props to you guys for pushing me to revisit the Colette wave cooker. Speaking of props, I think I know what I have to do.
You know what? I actually kind of like you now. So by now you're probably wondering where I got this badass impact axe, and that's what I'm excited to share with you. I recently stumbled upon an Etsy store named Delta Props, which specializes in 3D printed items from games like Halo, Warhammer, Cyberpunk, and Deep Rock Galactic. Besides the impact axe, he also makes the standard pickaxe, flares, credits and script, and even a bulldog revolver that caught Jacob's attention. And the quality is really great. The pieces fit together perfectly, and once everything's glued together, it feels really sturdy and I have no fear of swinging it around. I also got the flare and the credit and script bag, and these are great because they're ready to go right out of the box and don't require any paint or glue. The flare even comes with a remote for the LEDs so that you can change the color to match your class. Now obviously the impact axe is a little more complicated and requires some assembly. To save on shipping, it comes without the PVC pipe that runs through the middle, but Delta Props includes a sample piece to make it easy to find what you're looking for at the hardware store. And once you have that, the assembly itself is really straightforward. The painting definitely requires a little bit of work, but I couldn't be happier the way it turned out. And all of these are made from 3D models made from scratch by Delta Props, and he's already working on expanding his Deep Rock selection. So what's in it for you? Well, after chatting quite a bit with the owner, I've agreed to a partnership with Delta Props. If anything in his shop strikes your fancy, use the code DITNO10 at checkout to shave 10% off your entire purchase. It's a great deal considering everything is already very reasonably priced, especially for the quality of what you're getting. The link to his shop is in the description below, so be sure to check it out. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, rock and stone brothers and sisters. And the quality is really great. Once everything's glued together, it feels really sturdy and I have no fear of swinging it around. <laughs> it sounded like I broke something. Oh, that's a great, that's a great <laughs>